Welcome to the crap and the crazy with Tash Critter. Tash owns Little Wooden Toy Box and is mother of two teens, both with autism, ADHD and PDA. 10 years in early intervention, working with the kids' OTs, speeches and psychologists has given Tash unique insight into understanding difficult behaviours and why they occur, as well as understanding how emotional regulation and sensory input impacts us and our behaviour. This insight has helped Tash design and implement resources and coping strategies to make home life calmer and more organised. Join Tash as she talks about day-to-day -day life with autism, the sucky bits and the wins, plus tips for enjoying life despite the challenges. Hi, in today's episode I want to talk about surprises and excitement, particularly with Christmas coming up and also with birthdays, but yeah, this time of year, there's, as parents, we want to play this role for our kids and get invo like involved in their world and involved in their excitement. But when we have kids with autism, this doesn't always end well, yes? And again, no one tells you this. So I've got a few stories, um, you know, with my two, with birthdays in particular and Christmases and even now, so my kids are now 13 and almost 15 and we don't do surprises. So they know what they're getting for Christmas and that's how our Christmas looks calm and happy, yeah? Whereas in another household, you may really get involved in that whole surprise element, the build up to Christmas, but all of that, particularly with kids with ASD, just equals anxiety and they've got that fear element, which, you know, in those early years of parenting, when you are trying to play that role and have that excitement, um, and then your kids respond by screaming, that's really hard to deal with, yeah? So, you know, if you've got kids and you're either going through the diagnosis stage or you're beginning to notice that things are looking a little bit different for you or a lot different for you, um, I'm hoping that this will help. And, you know, just running through what we've experienced over the last 10 years. Um, I can't remember really when the kids were before, I mean, I can remember, but as far as Christmas and birthdays, I don't remember it being a huge issue before three years old, I'm pretty sure. And maybe that's just because they're babies and toddlers and they don't get the whole thing, I can't remember. But I really remember um, it was my boy's, either his third or fourth birthday. And um, we had met at a shopping center, which again, he wasn't diagnosed by this point. There were a few, there were quite a few things, but I hadn't put two and two together at this point. Um, so we're at a shopping center, had met my mum, so the kid's grandma, and she'd got him exactly what he wanted, yes? So it was a transformer truck that transformed into Optimus Prime, I think it was. But getting those beasts out of the box, my goodness. So my boy opened the present and he was already excited because we were meeting for him, it was his birthday, there's the build up around that. So he's already probably up at a level eight out of like 10 being your blow up, not coping anymore. He's probably already at an eight before he opens the present. So he opens the present and he gets what he wants and he's so excited. Now this, I will go into this a bit more as well, the difference between the tantrum and the meltdown. So there, there is a time, you know, when your kids are little as well, when they're not getting what they want straight away and they throw a tantrum and they're just being turd burgers, yes? This is different from that. So he is so happy, he's so excited, he's got what he wants, but there's that surprise and that anxiety element mixed with, we can't get this thing out of the box. So in his head, he's getting his present that he can play with straight away, but no one has prepared him for this process. Seriously, this thing look, took like 10 to 15 minutes to get out all those little whiny plasticky bits and then I think there were screwdriver bits as well to um, where the actual toy is stuck to the box. Does that make sense? I hope you know what I'm talking about there. So what? I don't think we even got five minutes in, two minutes in, 30 seconds in. It really didn't take much for him to go from zero to crazy and we were already, yeah, pretty wound up. So we're screaming down the shops. Now, for some parents, the screaming would mean leaving the shops. Again, time and a place for that. But with my boy in this situation, leaving the shops isn't going to help. Oh, it might help everyone else around us, but that really wasn't my concern at the time. Um, you know, that would have continued for hours and hours and hours. So he, he had what he wanted, 
but it still came with that anxiety and then that you know emotional overwhelm combined with probably sensory overwhelm being at the shops as well now the the difference here with a tantrum would be once the kid actually got what they wanted in their hands it would then finish yeah because the tantrum the noise the the throwing on the floor everything is to manipulate and get what they want does that make sense so tantrums are very controlled to get something and our little ones do that a lot because they're learning boundaries they're learning how to manipulate they're learning how to best get what they want and as parents we should then you know teach and reinforce um you know rewarding the good behavior ignoring the bad behavior that sort of thing this doesn't work for a meltdown yes so by the time we've screened the shops down we've got this toy out um, i don't know how but we got it out gave it to him but he is so worked up by this point that the meltdown continues now i wish i remember the end of this story i really don't but there was just so many of them but i remember that being the key turning point to going we don't do surprises as well this is something where he should have been happy and calm and loved being given a present which is what you really want for your kids and we have that you know as parents grandparents whatever else we have that expectation of i've put effort into this i've got something that i know you'll love you're supposed to love it and it's supposed to make you happy but our birthdays and christmases just did not among other things they just didn't look like that and it took me a long while to realize why. Like, I didn't even know the difference between meltdowns and tantrums at this point. I didn't even know what a meltdown was probably. I mean, I knew what it looked like, but I didn't have the words for it or why it happened. Now that that excitement, so we cover this in our emotional regulation packs, that excitement is very closely linked to anxiety, yeah? So we see excitement as a good, happy sort of thing, but to actually realize how close, particularly with kids with autism, are to a meltdown when they're in that excited state. And then I guess we've got to start to look at things differently, put things in place as parents to make that experience enjoyable for our kids. Yeah. Um, and for us, which again, it may look completely different for you and your family, Autism is such a massive spectrum. So you could have kids with autism and you don't have any issues in this area, but you could have issues in going to school every day or whatever, or just issues across the board everywhere. So as far as we went, um, I think the next year, which would have been, depends whether that was birthday or Christmas, but yeah, the next year he had a warning. So we'd ask him what he wanted. He would even go and pick it out at the shop. So there would be some element of surprise but they had a say in all of it they knew what was in the box yeah for christmas so we'd still go through all the motions but there was just no little surprises attached or big surprises and then for other things as well like we never did something like that transformer where i, I guess every parent learns this at that three or four year old stage where the toys just get more difficult but you would open the presents put them together, rewrap them so that they were ready to go the next day, yeah, uh, for their birthday, Christmas, whatever it was. So we never had to deal with again that screaming while unpacking. That's really stressful. It's really stressful getting them out like in silence by yourself, let alone with a kid screaming at you. And then on top of that, the whole shop looking at you too. Yeah, loads of fun. But I hope that helps as far as just some little strategies and, you know, changing your expectations, giving your family the heads up of, I know you really want to do this and I know you really want it to be a surprise, but, you know, we just have to parent a little bit differently. Would you be able to do this, this and this? And look, it's going to be trial and error from the beginning. And uh, we probably did it the wrong way for years, I suppose. Even when you're aware of something and you don't understand why, because you don't understand the emotional regulation and the sensory process processing and the, you know, the sensory overload, emotional overload. So you're just winging it. I mean, most of parenting is winging it, I'm pretty sure. Another one I remember, and I'll try and be careful here, I'm re-recording because I already blew it the first time, if you've got little ones listening in the car, um, that, you know, the excitement of getting on board with the elf on the shelf and then your kid screaming, screaming at him. <laughs> my kid wouldn't come out of, which one was it? I think it was my girl she would so we had a two-story house at the time and the elf that day had appeared on the stairwell rail yeah 
and she could see its eyes from the bedroom and she would not budge. So when she shuts down, so she doesn't have a meltdown, doesn't have a loud outburst sort of one, she will shut down. So her whole body shuts down. So she's tin soldier staring at this elf and she will not move out of her room. And it's like, this is not how Christmas is supposed to look. Another one, my boy in daycare. So he would have been three, three and a half or maybe two and a half. I don't know. He was little. Um, and, you know, the Christmas concert at the end of the year. So all the kids are wearing a red shirt, the little Santa hat, which that's probably already close to tipped him over the edge because of the sensory fluff around his head. But he's, he's wanting to be a part of this and he's standing there in front of all the parents with all the kids and you know, the daycare classes that they go to are small, but when they combine for the Christmas. So he's gone to a place that is normally a group of, what, 10, 20 kids, and there's a ton of people there. Everything looks different. So kids with autism don't do change well. So that in itself is an issue. But anyway, so he's at the front with the whole group of kids singing. Well, all the other kids are singing. My kid's there screaming his lungs out, but he didn't want to. Actually, he wasn't screaming so much as crying. He was like, sobbing, crying, devastated, but wanted to be a part of the group. So I couldn't remove him. He wanted to stay there, but he was so upset, so distraught. That's, yeah, yeah, that that didn't end well. But it, uh, yeah, parenting's so much fun with autism. And look, sometimes it does, a lot of the times it does have its fun points. And, you know, you can't take life too seriously. But, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. And I guess, you know, as I covered in the other episode as well, learning to let go of your expectations of how parenting is supposed to look, how it looks for other people, how you, you know, your family traditions are often out the window when you've got kids with autism. And, you know, this is a lot as a parent for you to deal with and to process and to you know, come to terms with and be okay with. And you're having to do all of this while dealing with the screaming and keeping them okay. Does that make sense? So look, I can't fix it for you, but just acknowledging, I suppose, that it's okay for things not to be as you expected. And look, that's going to be a grieving process for some of you as well. Um, one of my best friends, we were talking about this and, you know, they had their family dinners every night and all her sister's kids and their kids have their family dinners, but family dinners for them don't look like that. And coming to terms with that has been a big process. Um, I couldn't relate to that because family dinners for me, just I remember tears and it was awful and just the pressure and the, I don't know, did not enjoy it at all. So our family dinners in our house are all of us sitting on the couch watching a movie together and we still do this now um and you know yes we're sitting in front of a screen but we don't do conversation anyway and we're not facing each other so we're all facing the one way which the eye contact thing we're then avoiding that we still do talk um but for us in our house that's what a calm night looks like yeah so yeah Getting used to, and this will, especially when you're in those early years, this will take time. And even if you are in the thick of the crazy and just the awful at the moment, it's not always going to be like that. Yeah, it will change. They do grow up and what you're investing in them now really will pay off. And even though you can't see it, it will, it will. Um, so yeah, for, as I said before, birthdays and Christmas now, my kids pick what they want. So it's not necessarily they pick the exact thing, but as long as they know that I've got particular, oh, it depends what it is. If it's Lego, I get them to choose the exact thing. And then we wrap it up and we do the whole Christmas or birthday thing. Um, but yeah, there's, there's not the joy for them if they have that excitement. I'm going to stop there. Otherwise I will end up going on to another topic. That is enough for today. I really hope that helped. Um, and yeah, good luck for Christmas. I will talk to you soon. Bye.